and welcome to Stoked, the ultimate Star Trek online podcast. This is episode 108. My name is Chris, and good morning to all of these fine, intelligent, good-looking folks in the jblive.tv chat room. There they are, keeping me honest and on the straight and narrow. And then having a party with me over on K7 in the club is everybody, well, it's over in K7 on the club. We're rocking out. Of course, we got people in there. Uh, oh, my goodness, look at that outfit there. That's like uh, that's like if uh, Bordicus went drag queen. That's who that guy is. Uh, anyway, so uh, thanks to everybody hanging out in the uh, K7 club with me while we do the show. Now, we have a really great show for you this week. It's going to be a little probably different than what you're used to format-wise. In the next segment, I'm bringing on the J-Man, which traditionally the news roundtable. But he has so many things he wants to cover about what's coming up, everything from crafting system changes to the new ground skill improvements and even a few... Uh, visual UI peekaboos for you guys. All of that's going to be in that segment, including even an update on, on what took them so long tracking down Voldemort. So we're going to do a more condensed version of the show, which means, other than that segment, this is the only time that you and I have together this week. Uh, so I want to spend time with you, not just dancing in K7, but talking about the winter event, because that's sort of the big thing that hit the game since uh, the show last aired. We, we, uh, we kind of had a funky shooting schedule last week. And I think it's been a lot of fun. And it's been a financially, it's been a huge success for Cryptic. Uh, Steven D'Angelo came out and said that they were extremely thrilled with the response that they got with the holiday bundle package in the C-Store. Jeremy touches on that in uh, the interview as well. So it's great from that standpoint from, for Cryptic, and it's been a lot of fun for the players. That said, <laughs> you felt like there was a butt there, didn't you? Uh, that said, I do have one fairly large issue with this new uh, ground map, this new event. Let's just say, we'll just refer to it as this winter event. Um, and I feel like it's a kind of a fundamental flaw that doesn't ruin it, but if changed, would really improve the dynamic uh, and the really improve social interaction in this map. I feel like this winter zone is a social zone by definition only, in sense that there's other people in that zone at the same time I'm there that are not NPCs. And thus, if you go by that definition, yes, it is a social zone. Outside of that, what those people really are are pains in the ass for me and everybody else. The problem is it comes down to one major flaw in this entire event, and that is the uh, game coordinator, the Breen officer that you run up to and you have to spam F in order to then race. This, what that one little mechanic does is turn every single other player there into each other's competitor. So it's not really so much a fun social experience as it is this asshat is preventing me from getting on the track. And I've noticed as I've ran through it a few times that different people try different takes. There's some people who believe firmly in, an, in, a, in a line system. And you get in the line and you wait your turn and you move up to the guy and you press F. The problem is, not everyone in the same zone agrees with that system. Other people feel it's every man for himself, and they go up and they just hit F as fast as they possibly can, screwing the people in the line, or vice versa. And then I've even seen people bust out into swearing and anger in zone chat over the frustration of waiting forever to get on there and just not being able to hit the F at the right time. If that was gone, not to, not to mention it's slightly confusing to go talk to one NPC to get the quest and then run over to the other NPC to then hit F at just the right time, and then it does some sort of weird map transition, which I'm assuming that's probably why he's there in the first place for some sort of back-end reason. Uh, but, but if he was gone, if that, if that event coordinator wasn't there, think about how how social events would be dramatically changed. I mean, like, I couldn't take this group of people that are dancing with me right now on K7, and we cannot go have a race. But if that event coordinator wasn't there, and we could run down and we could throw snowballs at each other, and we could run as a group down that track and still have a competition, that would be so much richer of a social experience. I would really be playing with the other players on that map. And you can kind of do that, but like we can't go down as a group right now and all guarantee that we'll be on the track at the same time. Because that race coordinator is kind of hit and miss. And there's no guarantee that you're going to be put on this track at the same time your other players will be put on the track. And this, this whole thing is just one tweak that while must be necessary for some back-end technology, fundamentally alters the social experience for the zone. I would love to see that changed, and I would like to see it expanded so that while it, you could maybe maybe into a queue system or something, so a bunch of us could queue up and we could continue to run the race. Maybe we will only get the loot once a day, but I'd love to be able to continue to run the race. Maybe there's some sort of accolade that could be in there after you ran the race a certain time. You get some sort of you know hardcore snow explorer or something like that. Those kinds of things would take this from a fun social event to a real treat on a, for a holiday event for the community. Now I, I don't mean to downplay it. 
because it, it still is great to have it there and it's obviously been a big boost for everyone but i if those if that thing which perhaps with my you know exterior understanding i don't appreciate how much of a technological hurdle that would be for them but f- from a gameplay standpoint it really would make a pretty big improvement that's just my opinion now uh one of the other things that you get in this whole thing is that holiday package and you can send them to friends and other people in the game and I've been fortunate enough as a host of the show to have quite a few people send me different gift packages and I've gotten all kinds of crazy things that I'll probably be turning in for gold press latinum I'm just saying I'm just saying guys I'm just saying but uh, one of those boxes did contain uh, the Jemadar ship. I'm excited. I, from a secret Santa remaining anonymous, uh, I got the Jemadar attack ship. And so I've been flying this thing around, and it is a blast. I, immediately, to me, it kind of feels like a bird of prey. But I, I spiced it up. You know, I've put the uh, Borg set on there, and I've added a console that gives me a 30% turning radius. And you can... Man, can you whip around in this thing. And it is so much fun that I was compelled to go over to the sea store and buy myself a Cation and an Anar so that way I could have a little more fun uh, abilities for my tactical officers to play with the cannons and things like that. I've had a blast with this thing. And, and it does come with a bridge set as well. Now, there's not much you can do in this bridge. But one of the things that's in there, and actually we touch on this with the interview with the J-Man, so I'll let him uh, maybe explain the funny background to this. But one thing you can do with that, uh, there's a bridge officer in there, and it lets you actually switch back to your previous ship which is kind of nice as well. So you can just play with this, but you don't have to worry about not being quite specced for. If you're going to get into something serious, you can jump back into the ship that you're uh, more equipped to handle. So that's a really neat little treat. And then there's also all the sort of little fun things you can do with it. But we've got a lot of more details in the interview with the J-Man, so I'll save it for that. Um, one last thing I'll leave you with is uh, Stoked is taking a little bit of time off for the holidays. The next two Saturdays we won't be recording, which means uh, there won't be an episode from us until January. But don't worry, we'll be back in time before free-to-play launches with all kinds of goodies, and I'll give you more details at the end of the next segment. One last thing, since we are signing off for the holiday, I'm going to throw in the show notes a bunch of Star Trek goodies that I personally love or, or have lusted after on Amazon. And if you buy anything in those show notes, any of those Star Trek goodies or th- something like that, uh, a portion of your purchase goes to support Jupiter Broadcasting, which which at the end of January, when I finally get all that money from Amazon, will be when I celebrate Christmas. <laughs> so thanks to everybody who does that. <laughs> it's, it's much appreciated. All right, let's jump into the news roundtable. And welcome to Stokes News Roundtable. We're doing a special one this week. You might recognize the mug right next to me. It's the J-Man. Welcome back, Jeremy. Hey, it's good to be on the internet once more. <laughs> <laughs> the internet's missed you, sir. Well, actually, you've been around a bit, but why don't you tell us what, what have you been up to? What have I been up to? Yeah, I know you've uh, been. I've heard a few rumors. There's been some things that we might have gotten our hands on recently you might have been involved with. Yeah, Al was telling you all about it this, uh, just last week, right? I'm, yeah, he spilled the beans for you. I was kind of um, the guy that had to make the Winter Wonderland happen. I mean, not from the content side. Like, they made the race, they planned all that, but then they needed something to make it fun so yeah i gave them the slippery powers that make you slip all over the place <laughs> and then i used that same power to make the the snowballs and the frosted boots that go That's, with it so, that was a fun twist the whole slippery thing and was the animation new that slippery oh i'm gonna fall was that a new yeah animation? and that was a lot of fun uh, our animator actually just overheard al and i talking about the they were called ice skates at the time instead of frosted boots and he was like dude 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 you guys are doing ice skates <laughs> and then we told him more about it and, and what we were going to need and so he just went out of his way to to pull this thing it sells it air. sells the whole crap that yeah. <laughs> So we weren't planning to have any special animations because it was such a short time scale. Um, But then he also, in addition to the slipping, I don't know if you guys know, but if you use the frosted boots and go onto the lake in the middle of Q's Winter Wonderland, you actually ice skate like a speed skater. Oh, I got to try that. Two sets of animations there that he put in there just for funsies. Good man. Now, is Mm -hmm. that the same guy that I met uh, back when we did our tour and he was showing us some of the advanced animations and stuff like that? Yeah, same guy. Cool. Yeah, he was cool. working on the uh, the Tholians and the EV suits and stuff back then. So the yep. other uh, the other little bomb that Al dropped on us is that uh, the nickname around the office that they've coined for you is Tron. Now, really, that's just Al. <laughs> okay, okay. Well, I like it. But he's trying to make it catch on. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll do what I can to help. <laughs> um, yeah, he, he actually coined that because, well, you guys know all about the, uh, the, uh, the lithium... Um, conversion rate the mm-hmm. some of the highest earners were uh the, well they were getting kind of very low rates not all that friendly in their terms their past uh contributions 
and time spent in the game were, were being felt. reflected. Yeah, yeah. Now we've already got dev posts and stuff that go over all the reasons for that, but it was true. They their time wasn't being as highly valued, and I went to bat for them, and I ended up being the catalyst that got those guys the veteran bridge officers. And the uh, winter package tickets. That's got to feel pretty good coming into the game yeah. as an outsider and that kind of thing. And working sort of that outside experience into your approach to handling these kind of things. Yeah, and I've been trying to be very um, active on the forums and everything, making sure that, that people really do. I mean, over the past several months, Cryptic has gotten kind of a bad reputation. There have been some promises made in the past that we haven't been able to live up to yet. Some that it seemed to have been slipping in by the wayside, and the the public opinion has been steadily going downhill a bit. And I'm hoping that I can try to bring that around. Now, it's not that Cryptic is not listening; it's just that we're so damn busy. Yeah, yeah. I mean, there's so much going on, trying to get every last bit of the game polished up so that the free to play players are going to enjoy their experience when they come in next month. Are you a bit like uh, I don't know? Is gobsmacked? Is that the right word by like how much work <laughs> it is involved after you've seen it now from that side? It's funny because my workload hasn't been high enough because everybody's so heads down they can't give me things to do. <laughs> I, I, there's been a limited amount of training, and most of these things that I've been able to 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 do have been basically be going well. I wonder what happens when I do this. I'll try to figure it out. Yeah. No, <laughs> yeah. that's a great way to go. So, yeah. uh, what kind of things are kind of coming up down the road? Well, a lot of what I've been doing recently is not new things coming up. I have been doing a little bit of work on some of the featured episode things that they need, not the content, but some of the special powers and stuff and the mm. rewards that are going to be coming with those. Uh, I don't think I can release any details of those just yet. <clears throat> but aside from working on those that are that are distant releases, I've been doing a lot of basically going back over the power systems and the items that are in game and fixing them. Oh, really? Like, I mean, a big example of this is for a long time now, Mind Meld has crashed the game. Yeah, we were actually just talking with, about that on the live stream. Yeah, with about a 90% reliability, you could use Mind Meld and crash. Or crash somebody else if they were in PvP. Oh. oh. so <laughs> That's got a dirty play too, isn't it? <laughs> I mean, realistically, it only affected a very small amount of the players. It was only Vulcans, and Mind Meld was actually a voluntary trait. So not every Vulcan even had it. Mm. Um, hmm. But it was still something that was such an obvious, real... <laughs> live bug and crash bug that uh, it needed to be fixed. So Did the game Was the game trying to divide by zero or something like that? Is pretty that much. Right? Yeah. Roughly. Good thing uh, actually, that. just to give you a, a brief explanation, it had to do with uh, forcing movement on an alien entity that's not yourself. Huh. And we had to fix that. So, uh, yeah, trying to force movement on somebody else didn't work all that well. Mm. Well, hey, man, it's good you caught that kind of thing because, yeah, it's funny. Some of this stuff gets caught, and you guys have already got things like that fixed, but they might not already. Is that already on holodeck? How does that work exactly? Because you guys will find something, and sometimes it's an entire week or goes by or more before it actually the fix gets in, right? That's all a matter of priorities, and uh, I don't really handle any of that. Basically, I put a fix in, and I let the producers know the fix is in, and then they choose whether or not it has to go right now. So they kind of figure out the overall big picture schedule mm -hmm. and when it goes in. Hmm. Yeah. No, it was a little tough for a little while there because we had the free-to-play build on Tribble. Right. And if we, wanted, if we had to fix something live, we had to go into a different environment to fix it there. That was why we had Red Shirt, uh, so that we could we could actually work. It wasn't just for testing, but that was also actually how we had to work. Um, yeah. So, <laughs> kind of confusing there for a little while. But um, wire. Yeah. We're uh, good now. Right. As Let's... we move forward, the, uh, the process keeps streamlining itself. and it, it's, uh, We're moving forward to a better time and place. Let's talk about a few of the little teasers that you've put in this doc here that I don't know all of the details yet, but they definitely have uh, my uh, interest peaked, including one that you put in big, bold text. <laughs> That uh, I'm almost, I'm almost wondering if it's a joke or not. So I'm, I'm going to put you on the spot right now. Is it true? Is this item coming to the game, J Man? And what is it? Well, sadly, I can't just say yes or no because the answer is yes and no. <laughs> oh, what? <laughs> oh my goodness. Uh, okay, so a bunch of us around the office are big fans of MMOs in general uh, and sci-fi in general. And as most of you are probably aware, there's a big MMO release coming soon, like uh, within the next. Well, actually, probably the day that this episode actually comes out, right? Ah, uh, see, what game? Let's see. Uh, hmm. Yeah, okay, I'll have to just take your word for it, Jamin. I haven't heard that. <laughs> it's Star Wars The Old Republic. And oh, that game! Guys around the office are already playing it. We're nerds. <laughs> we love Star Wars uh, almost <laughs> as much as Star Trek, some of us. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So we decided to do an homage to Star Wars. Now, this is nothing that we're trying to get your extra money for or anything like that, but a few of us on the systems and the art team managed to get working lightsabers. But they're not called lightsabers. They are nanopulse weaponry. 
It's an actual canon reference nice. to an invention by Harcourt Fenton Mud, mm-hmm. and uh, so they actually uh, their their metal or their um, energy blades. There's a Batleth version and a Lerpa version. Oh, really? Yep. That's and pretty cool. There's a chance when you're swinging around that they can reflect incoming blaster. Fr- I mean, energy weapon fire. Right. 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 Okay. So. <laughs> <laughs> and it's gonna be a popular item you know it given out free oh really <laughs> to anybody that logs in between i think it's like december 20th and 25th or something like that uh they're free you just go into q's winter wonderland and you get them from a little short green ferengi oh that's awesome okay so it's yeah. not a money grab it is all about having fun yeah well, it's a homage it's because we love sci-fi we love games and we just want to have some fun with it right on right on yeah. All right. Well, uh, I also heard a little birdie tell me there's some work coming up for uh, space revamps, including you know we've we've got the skill set that we've talked about, but now there's also like some UI changes coming down the road and things like that, right? What yeah, can you share? I'm actually really getting looking forward to this. They're on a, a separate branch of our code that I haven't gotten to play with yet, and Al has, and he keeps calling me over to his cube. Hey, look at this! <laughs> look at this, J Man. And I'm like, give it to me, <laughs> so, dude. Imagine like, how we feel. Imagine how we feel. <laughs> Uh, but the, as far as the space revamp goes, the skills themselves are pretty much in place. But whenever you do a major overhaul like this was, there's going to be some things that fall through the crack. Mm. And that, over the last several days, has basically been one of my primary jobs, is to go through and make sure that you know consoles are giving you the right bonuses of the right amounts. The set pieces that might have been calling on different skills are now giving the correct skills. Uh. Uh, so all of that is, has been in flux over the last few days. You might have probably seen some of the patch notes going on Tribble. There's also been a lot of trait changes um, to make use of the new skill system. It was all stuff that had to happen, um, and it's finally it finally is happening. And we mm-hmm. had to get it in place because right around the corner is the ground revamp. Has there been anything going into the space revamp or into the ground revamp? That might be a good lead-up to the ground revamp. Is there any particular change that you've been really intent on seeing make in that's kind of been like a bugging you that you're glad to see fixed? Anything kind of notable that jumps out at you? Well, primarily the traits. Um, one of the big sticking issues is always, uh, well, over the last several weeks since we did the space revamp was join symbiote. You know, the join troll race was actually a bonus for people that, yeah. uh, I think it was a pre-order um, bonus for somebody or a collector's edition or something like that. But it was, it was something that people paid an extra buck for, bought into. And with the skill revamp, they weren't exactly getting their original money's worth. Without an ability to retrate to pick new traits on your characters, we don't we don't have that yet. Um, it, it was really it was kind of an unfortunate situation. So that was something that I was really glad to see fixed. Yeah, yeah. I actually that was another Tron moment um, that I had to I had to go to bat. Did you <laughs> for players yeah, to get what they needed? Ah, um, oh, J man. But in the end, I prevailed. So uh, you, you mentioned <laughs> a little bit, and Al said it's coming. We've heard from Al in previous episodes. It's coming down the road, but uh, now it's time to talk a little about ground skills. Yeah. Yep. Actually, just this morning, we pretty much got ground version 1.0 uh, on our internal builds. is now all, all hooked up and should be functioning well enough to start running it through its paces. So that probably means somewhat kind of soon to Tribble, or is that still a ways off for folks? I Maybe after the holidays? He, he's in the chat room, so, um, uh, but I think he's planning to get it to Tribble like within a week. So that we can, so that not only we can start uh, b- pounding on it, but players as well. Yeah, uh, and and Al made a post uh, earlier uh, today mm-hmm. where uh, he outlined some of the uh, ground skill changes that are coming to the game. So I'll, I'll link to that in the show notes too, so people can read the the numbers yeah. of. Is there any of these in particular you want to cover here? Well, the thread uh, covers a lot of the primary points that people are probably going to be a little uh, thrown by when they first see the the overhaul. Is uh, one of the biggest ones is we're planning to change the entire scaling of skill points. Hmm. Not just in the UI and not just how much that they cost and how much it costs to buy an individual rank, but everything across the board. That means how many you're rewarded for every mission and everything. Oh, wow. it, it is just a display change because these things are already very granular on the back end and we've been um, changing the way that the UI interprets them. But it's going to be a shock to some players to see a whole new swath of numbers. Mm-hmm. Uh, I don't have them in front of me, but that post in the, that you're going to be putting in the show notes does have a good explanation of exactly how they're going to work out. Along with this, though, it's important to note that um, the whole scale is, instead of being a linear, like, like you know, it's cheap on one end and then it's this expensive on the other end, we're yeah. taking the whole scale and kind of tilting it a little bit. So it's going to get slightly more expensive at the low end, but much cheaper at the high end. Uh, so it's a little more, um, it's less of a steeper climb as you reach the end. 
Mm -hmm. Gotcha. Which is going to be, uh, it's going to allow more players to invest heavily in some of those high tier skills. Yeah. Uh, which I, I think they're going to really enjoy. It's going to, it's going right. to change a lot of the balance of the game. <laughs> right, right. Yeah, that will, won't it? That Another will be fundamental nice. change coming with this is a forced split of ground and space skills, which is something that a lot of people have been asking for. I'm a little worried that they're not going to like it once they get what they've been asking for. How will that? <laughs> how will that? How will I interact with that as a player? How, will it just be one screen still, but just divided, or? And Two it will still pools of numbers that I can pull from. It'll still be one pool, and there will basically be requirements or or caps. I'm not sure how we're going to do it. Where a certain amount of your uh, skill points has to go in your ground, and a certain amount ha can go in your space after that. And there's also going to be like a flex amount. It probably won't be a whole lot, but there will be a, a few points that you can kind of. So uh, as a player, I could yeah. say I'm going to be a more aggressive in my ground combat abilities. Yeah. I'm going to I'm going to take a little bit from Peter to pay Paul and that, or whatever the saying is there. Yeah, it won't be, uh, you won't have the complete freedom that you have now, but on the other hand, that will allow us as the designers, as, as the content and systems guys making this game, to actually more accurately balance exactly what players will have available to them. We can actually make um, ground content in particular that might be slightly harder because we can guarantee that all players are going to have a certain amount of skill in their ground skills. Ah, uh, it it might allow for some more robust uh, content experiences in the future. We, we don't know exactly, but um, so then you might see more like a a bad guy who is has a can maybe hit you a little harder than your other guy, and instead of relying on things like force fields to force you in a certain area to make it more mm -hmm. challenging, that kind of thing. Right, potentially. Yeah. Okay. Well, that that could be interesting. But you know, I mean, you mentioned force fields. I'm I'm sure you're referring to Armec. Yeah. Uh, from the Cure. <laughs> that was a pain in the ass, man. I can guarantee you that when this for, when this uh, whole ground revamp first goes through, everything's going to be broken. For a short while, everything's going to be broken, and we just need to ask people to be patient and give us constructive feedback about what's broken, not just throw your hands up in the air and whine about it. I mean, right. that, that's going to happen. You, what and we understand is the first, we're pass isn't, the first pass isn't final. Oh, God, no. Yeah, yeah. Oh, God, no. <laughs> <laughs> it's one of those things where I think you're right. I think a lot of people will be upset about it, but the ground skill system, a lot of the things involving ground combat have needed to be kind of retouched, and a lot of them have now. This is one of the things that's kind of still remaining from launch. Mm -hmm. So that makes sense. Yeah, Anything well, else on the ground skills? Well, think about the how long it's taken. We are just now kind of to a point where I'm personally comfortable with the way space skills have been revamped to like we finally filled in all the cracks that we can find they're all there's still some balance issues but now they're not bugs they're just balance issues and we can work from there um and that's taken what three months since we first introduced it on triple mm -hmm. now we want to push up that time scale and learn from what we did with the space revamp so we can get the ground revamp done much faster on a much tighter time scale. Um, but still, it's not an immediate process. We do need people to try it out and to be open-minded about what is there and give us constructive feedback about what you're seeing and not just, like I said, throw your hands up in the air and say it and claim that we're nerfing everything. We have tried to give you something every time we take something away. That's kind of my personal philosophy, and I think it's um, bleeding off onto Al a little. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, now, I, I, I want to jump around a little bit because there's a couple of questions that I think uh, I'll get a hard time if I don't get them asked. And, mm -hmm. and uh, one of them is pertaining to the featured episodes. But before we get to that, I want to ask you about uh, the STF gear. I guess there's some changes coming to the loot or, or what? What are we seeing with that? Well, not... Um, big sweeping changes. Just the fact that when they were made, they weren't given a proper banging out. Uh, they were they were made and they were made sure that they were working. But are we talking still like the Aegis set and the Borg set and stuff no, like that? No, we're talking about the new Mako Elite oh, okay. Okay. and Klingon Honor Guard okay. um, uh, stuff. Now they work. They work fine. But yeah. some of them aren't working up to par to the others. Some of them might be considered OP in certain situations, overpowered. Mm -hmm. So uh, we're basically going to start a balance pass on all of those. And I'm kind of leading the charge on that. And okay. we just started, so you're going to start seeing some changes to those soon. Um, I can't guarantee which way they're going to go hmm. yet, because I just started reviewing them. <laughs> but, uh, hmm. yeah, just rest assured that, um, well, I don't, maybe I should not say rest assured, but they're going to be changing. Yeah. 
Well, we'll probably we'll follow it. So we'll yeah. keep we'll keep people, people updated on the show as as that develops. As uh, Cryptic Gecko cries nerf in the chat room. <laughs> don't Just tell as me. I claim responsibility. <laughs> <laughs> that's I love it. I love it. That's that's what you do with the new guy. He knows right. what he's doing. <laughs> um, okay. So uh, before we leap on any further, uh, I I want to ask you about the featured episodes. I I remember seeing uh, things like the Beijer or Social Zone and stuff like that. So I know there are works in progress. But do you have any updates with them? You can share with us anything about featured episodes because it's oh, always man. on people's minds i i don't i don't know how much i can share but the best uh, the best i can do is tease you more really at this point i've got i'm now sitting right next to jesse heinig who used to be on the systems team but has moved over to content and he's responsible for some of the best featured episodes we've got in the game like the the uh, uh what lies beneath you know the the dark mm. one mm-hmm. scary so many great missions that he's made and he's doing a a good deal of the content for the featured episodes and every day he's like j-man check this out and he's (laughs) something new and awesome and i can't tell you anything about it i want to but i don't think that i've been cleared for that i can tell you that there's new really fantastic loot coming that i've been building again no details yet but it's very thematic i think loot that will be part of the featured episode rewards kind of thing actually going get as rewards for doing this stuff um i i'm already playing around with them internally they're they're a great little uh uh pile of of goodies and some of them get whole new effects that we're using for uh the gym hadar themselves are going to get a little bit of an overhaul because the version that's in the game now is not up to par with like the romulan revamp we did or the davidian group or the mm. breen or anything mm. like that so the gym hadar is getting a pass and uh they're going to actually be using some of the same effects that we put in place for the uh loot that you're going to get as well oh so whole swath of new stuff coming there's a couple other items i wanted to follow up with you on i got the spider sense tingle when i'll mention something on our interview last week and i my impression it's way out there but uh i he said you know we've heard the complaints about crafting and we're about to you know look at that and start making changes Mm -hmm. Uh, are you yeah i think he dropped your name saying you might be involved with that crafting stuff anything you can tell us on that he threw me under the bus. Actually, yeah. <laughs> he's been saying since he hired me that that's one of the things he wanted to pull on my experience with past MMO crafting because he knew that it's something that I really uh, I do. I love crafting mm. in MMOs, and uh, it looks like um, that when we get to uh, overhauling that, which will, is probably going to start soon after the first of the year, uh, I'm probably going to be heading that project up. Oh, really? Yeah. No details yet of what kind of changes? I, I, you know, I, since it's still just a design on paper, I'm hesitant to, okay. uh, to go forward too much with oh it, but God. I will try to get you guys as much information as I can as it starts to go forward. You know, just like uh, Heretic really took the ball and ran with it on the DOF system, yeah. once we had some solid designs in place, right. and tried to get that information out. It, I intend to try to do something. It so- actually seems to me like if, if, this is just my personal opinion, but if, if Cryptic were still at the drawing board now for what everything they have, and say, say you guys had took everything you have in Stowe, and you mm-hmm. can put it on a whiteboard and say, we're going to make a video game out of this. I, I just cannot imagine a whiteboard where the crafting system and the DOF system would be on different sides of the board. It seems like they're pretty much integrated with each other. The DOF system could mm-hmm. very easily carry out crafting specific jobs. And it just, to me, if looking at it from the big picture, I, I got to imagine there's something you guys could do there. Yeah, I got to imagine that as well. All right. Well, uh, <laughs> one other thing that was kind of touched on, I don't know if it made in the final version of the interview with Al, but uh, it's sort of been bubbling, I think, since the dilithium stuff came up. But uh, people have asked, what's the deal with gold press latinum? Where's the, what's the usefulness of it? And mm-hmm. um, I wanted to bring that up with uh, this actually somebody. It came from up uh, recently and has become more of a topic because we put in our Q's Winter Wonderland a buyback yeah. vendor. Some right. people, you know, they bought a lot of chance boxes. Um, Thank you, crazy people. You're paying my paycheck. <laughs> <laughs> but in those chance boxes came a lot of those holiday collectibles. And some people just didn't want them. For one reason or another, they weren't really interested in buying uh, the foods or the scarves or anything like that. So but they, they just had an inventory scarves. full of this stuff and wanted to do something with it. So we gave them an uh, opportunity to trade it back in for something that could be useful down the road. I do like that. As a, as a person who does have inventory management issues, I do appreciate mm-hmm. that. Mm. And so then the, the obvious question came up what do we do with the stuff that we traded it in for? Right now, GPL doesn't have a whole lot of use, uses in the game. You can get some hollow emitters for your yeah, ship. Yeah, that's what I, yeah. Some trophies for your ready room. Mm-hmm. That's it. Um, so it's been a goal, a personal goal of mine to eventually get more and more things for GPL in the game and to truly turn Gold Press Latinum into a social currency. 
a, something that you use to buy things that enhance your social experience, not mm. have any impact on the rest of the game. You know, it's not going to make you better in combat. It's not going to allow you to cheese the system in any way. It's just going to be fun things. Maybe a, a charge, uh, a consumable emote that gives you something special and, and fun. It kind of like you know, there's the 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 party popper. Yeah, yeah, like yeah. So if if there's more fun things for GPL down the road, actually people- that might not be bad because one of the problems with some of those things is they're endless. <laughs> so yeah. people could just come into a zone and just have a party, and you exactly. just nothing you can do. They're just a fountain of fun. But if they had to spend, maybe I don't know, maybe this isn't the right idea. But if they had to spend a little uh, gold press latinum to get that, maybe it'd be a little more precious of a resource. Yeah, well, and, and it fits with the whole idea. The original source of gold press latinum, other than the prototype consoles, was Dabo, which is supposed to be a social experience. To begin with, so yeah. why not just really nail that point home? Oh, and- I know, poker. <laughs> 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 I just actually just thought of that. Actually, poker would be pretty cool. I um, never thought of poker. <laughs> Write <Writing> that down. <laughs> um, oh, I've lit the chat room. I was listening, looking at the different suggestions the chat room has, and they've all got different ideas. Um, but you know, just uh, to put a bug in your ear, that might not make a bad um, community feedback. Yeah, items there for GPL. There you I'd, go. I'd look forward to hearing like some that. of those suggestions. I think we should make that. A, in fact, yeah. hell, let's, let's make that a future community feedback, folks. Send us your ideas for uh, Gold Press Latin to stoked at jupiterbroadcasting.com, and we'll cover them in a future community feedback, maybe mm-hmm. next week. Well, no, I don't think we're going to be here next week because of Christmas. and Next New year, Year's. right? Yeah, next year, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, now, J-Man, uh, anything uh-huh. else you want to talk about? Yeah, I figured I'd go ahead and take an opportunity here before you get rid of me to do a quick follow-up on the Voldemort issue. Oh, okay, came great. up on the previous, uh, when you guys were interviewing Al. Yeah. Um, this actually was really helpful. Having you guys sit down and show the reproduction steps of how to make this bug happen was exactly what we needed to get it fixed. It is now fixed. Um, I don't know for certain because I haven't played enough on Holodeck whether or not it's live, but we fixed it internally, it tested it, it's working. Well, now, you guys have gotten some heat, though, because we weren't necessarily the first people to report it. Uh, and that's kind of been a point of contention in the forums is, you know, some people are saying, well, hell, we've been talking about this for a while. Why did it take so long to get fixed? It's true. And actually one of the primary issues was just that a lot of the bug reports that were received over the, however long this bug is, actually the bug's been around since launch, sadly. Um, but all, the majority of the reports that we had heard were not properly pointing us to the true issue. They mm. were saying things like so-and-so has two shields equipped or, or so-and-so is swapping their shields during combat. And kind of making an assumption as to what the problem was. Yeah, exactly. And so we would go, or our QA guys would go in to try and figure out a way to make two shields get equipped at the same time, and they just couldn't do it. So when we finally got some steps to say, look, this is how you make it happen, you can figure out why. We yeah. were. We were able to figure it out very quickly, actually. I think Al was the one that finally nailed it down. And I'm going to go ahead and blow the whistle on exactly what was happening, just so people can understand some of the behind the scenes, why it was so hard to track down. That'd be great. Um, see, what happens is when you're, when you're flying around in your spaceship, if, you get, if your shield gets damaged, you do, when you drop out of combat, might still have damage on your shield. Yeah, sure. And you may have the opportunity then to switch it with a different that might be full. So ah. that's why we allow you that opportunity. If you want to carry around a backup shield because your primary is getting shredded, cool. But that one that you put away needs to remember that it's damaged. Right, so that way when you re-equip it, it's not full. Exactly, because then you could just do a quick double click and then your shields will be full. Yeah. So in order to work around that, we had a function in the game that basically remembered that this other shield was on you and uh-huh. was damaged. Uh-huh. The problem was there were certain um, aspects of the power system, including shield heals and redistribution of shield um, health from your different facings that were still pulling information from this disabled shield that you had sitting in your backpack. Ah, I see. So it, those mods, those uh, we call them disabled mods mm-hmm. from from your uh, unequipped shield, were supposed to be ignored, but sadly were not being. So if you switched out your shield a whole bunch of times when you first got into a zone, those disabled mods would stay with you until you had zoned again. So people, in particularly in PvP, were using this aspect to make it look like they were benefiting two, three, four, five times over from heals and being able to redistribute. Basically, they had a pool of instead of just like 8,000 shields on their ship, they had a max of 8,000 with a pool that was several times that over. So when they did like a recharge, they could pull from that pool kind of. Exactly. Or or emergency power to shields or something like that. When you redistribute, it takes the total that you have remaining in all of your facings and then averages it out. But if you have 
you know, if you've got 8,000 per facing and one of them is down, but you have another four facings of 8,000 in your bag, right. it was still distributing from all of those. Right. So it was plenty. Mm-hmm. Huh. Way I see we got them. It. So it was just a matter of tracking down the code that was still reading from those disabled mods and fixing it. There you go. Hmm. Yeah. So, uh, J-Man... I think mm-hmm. uh, I think we've covered a lot of ground here. Now uh, I I'll probably have all kinds of different uh, visuals and things in the show that cover everything we talked about. But also I'll try to throw some links in the show notes so people can uh, catch some of that stuff. But is there anything else you want to cover before we sign off? Well, since we're on the subject of big bad exploits, there's one more that I'm trying to track down right now, and I don't actually know all the details of it right now. But uh, apparently there are ways in which you can get the wrong bridge officers equipped on your ships. So if anybody has some information about that, try to either drop a, a note in the forums or try to get in touch with me or QA directly or send us a bug report with actual reproduction steps of how to do it mm-hmm. so that we can track that one down and fixing it. And still is one of the best ways to do that is if you're in-game at the spot where it's happening, submit mm-hmm. the bug there. So you can do it yeah. in-game. Especially if you've managed to make it happen on your own ship. Right. Uh, right. so, and you won't be penalized. I think that's one thing that was going on early with Voldemort is people yeah. that were trying to point out the issue were ended up being banned from the forums and things like that. I'm trying to make it very not happen. <laughs> I mean, it, <laughs> Very not happen. <laughs> if somebody comes to us with, hey, look, I accidentally cheated, or I cheated on purpose and I want you to fix it. Yeah. I don't personally care if you've been making use of this exploit. If you're trying to tell us about it so that we can fix it, that's gravy to me. I, it's I don't just a hard line to walk, are, too, because you yeah. don't want somebody in there broadcasting how to cheat, either. Right, exactly. And that's why I think a lot of the threads were shut down on the forums and everything. But if you're coming to myself or another cryptic dev or QA directly and showing them how to cheat, yeah, we want to know all about that. Yeah, right on. Mm-hmm. All right, J-Man. Well, cool. Thanks for coming on and uh, updating us on all this stuff. Uh, sounds like you've been pretty busy. Yeah. <laughs> all right. Well, uh, so that you guys heard earlier in the show... Uh, we're taking the next two weeks off of Stoke because it's Christmas and then it's uh, New Year's and, well, we just figured nobody's going to be around anyways and it's just a good time to take off and be with family. So Stoke will be off for the next two weeks, but then we're back in January, if you can believe that, in 2012, assuming we're all still here, right? It doesn't. The world doesn't blow up until later it's in 2012. It's the end of 2012. Okay. So we'll yeah. definitely be back at the beginning of 2012 with another episode of Stoked, which I believe the first one will then be on uh, live on Saturday the 7th for release on January 10th, 2012. I can't believe I'm even saying that. With free-to-play right like a week after that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We've got some good stuff, including uh, ma- uh, instructions and walkthroughs that are going to help people get ready for free-to-play and things mm-hmm. like that. All right, everyone. Well, thanks so much for tuning into this week's episode of Stoked, and we'll see you right back here in two weeks. Or in three weeks. <laughs>